Portland Trailblazers get their first road win of the season last night against the Los Angeles Clippers, 106-105. Not exactly a high-scoring affair, but it was the most complete and connected the Portland Trailblazers have been this season. Uh, it's been a short season, obviously. Uh, just five games played, now two and three on the season. And before everybody freaks out, they're going to lose plenty. They play the Oklahoma City Thunder tomorrow night and then the Suns on Saturday. In a say, do they not understand the assignment? <laughs> can we can we fire Chauncey for now being too good? Look, the whole like go zero and eighty two thing. Just chill, chill, chill. You don't want that. Uh, I I'd like them to lose. Look, they'll be fine there. Let's be bottom four. Okay, they won one hundred six one hundred five. They they weren't playing out of their minds. They shot 40, 45, 42, 83, and none, they, nothing's crazy on volume. They've currently got a 400 winning percentage, which is way too high. Yeah. I realize it's small sample size theater, but yeah. and, still. And on Sunday, they'll be 2-5. and five. Okay. Like, I'll feel better then. The, they won the two games that I picked them to win in their first five. One of the Pelicans games and the Clippers. Okay, that was fair. like when I when fair I went, enough. when it's I went through and did up. this, I went. Ah, the Clippers is a, is a good chance for a win. Like that's that's one I could see. They just don't have the offense to really put Portland under stress. Um, where Sacramento, they you you know they can they can they can score points in bunches, and then you add Demar Derozan to that. La da da. But I thought last night you, you got the best version of this Trailblazers team when you're talking about. The process and like the idea of what they're trying to do. You had moments from basically everyone except for Jeremy Grant. Jeremy no, Grant had his had a, had, a, had a poor shooting night, but you had Tumani Kamara step up, give you twelve points. You had DeAndre Ayton give you another double double. He's now the him and Bill Walton are the only Trailblazers ever to start a season with five straight double doubles. So to kind of put that into well, a there's weird no in and outs up here yet. Hmm? There's no in and outs up here yet. What do you mean? Double doubles, man. Maybe there is. There's, well, there's one in Kaiser. Yeah, there's one coming drive, in Beaverton driving, real soon. They're not driving to Kaiser for a double double. The one in oh, Beaverton will be there real soon. Sir, in this tri- Ridgefield, right next to the Chick Fil A. Have you? Have you? Do you know me? You're driving to Kaiser for a double double. It's Twenty minutes away. For I'm him, not, I'm. I was like, it's an hour for me. Well, I'm you not forget, driving to Kaiser. You forget that with Danny and Newberg, everything is two blocks yeah, away. Everything's two <laughs> blocks away. Yeah, that's true. It's a hop, skip, and a jump. Tell you what. Tell you right now. Not going to get any double doubles, but yeah. if there's going to be one in Beaverton, then I would expect more Blazers to have five double doubles. Oh, there you go, animal style even. That's the fries. No, animal style is for the burger and the fries. I'll just go get a milkshake. Do you not know this? I just get the fries, dude. Okay, animal style fries. I don't need to mess with the burger. I'm or, fine with the shake. Everything else is overrated. Eh, it's fine. It's, it's fast food. When you look at how the young players have played, Donovan Clean, Scoot Henderson, are you happy with where they're at? With who? Where Scoot's at? Or Both. Because just... uh, that's what people care about. People want to know that they are showing signs of improvement. Yeah, no, and that's where I was going to get with all this. You're seeing everybody show signs of improvement. Denny Avdi is still not shooting great, but he was incredibly productive last night. 13 points, 10 rebounds. Uh, hit a couple of big shots. Uh, got a chase down block that basically sealed the game for did him. He hit, did he hit a three? He did. Did he? He did. Okay. He, he did hit it. He was one of three last night. Okay. Well, that... Yeah. Helps the average 100. percent Yeah. Uh, Ryan Repair played seven minutes and 32 seconds, and he had seven points. Wait, did they adjust his line? It says he has six. There it goes. Okay, there it goes. It wasn't updated. Was, he had seven points. Um, uh, Roops might have won the game for the Blazers last night. There was a moment late or early in the fourth quarter. I think it was about 10 minutes to go, and the Clippers had built a lead, 90 to 82. And he played minutes that mattered, and he went out there and he scored mm-hmm. seven straight points in like a, a minute thirty. Two drives, got an and one, missed the free throw, but got a kick out on that free throw that led to a three for him, and boom, seven mm-hmm. points. They they kind of mobbed him after the game, and you know congratulated him because it was incredibly productive in that little spurt. So you've got twenty year old Ryan Repair uh, contributing. Donovan Klingon hits the three. That allows the Blazers to to get the game winning shot after being in foul trouble, and you know he's still early in his career. Chris Murray was everywhere last night defensively, uh, incredibly disruptive. I thought he did as good a job as I've seen him do in his young career. Scoot Henderson was great in the first half. Uh, I here's the thing about Scoot: had he shown what he has shown the first five games of this season last season to start the year, the discussion around him would be very different. He looks. He doesn't look like he's fully 
comprehending and understanding and in control of everything. He still looks very young. Mm-hmm. Like he, when he makes mistakes, like, oh, for the love of God, dude, what are you doing? But he also, you're starting to see, he, like, Ivica Zubac is a guy that has eaten his lunch from the, for the Clippers. Yeah. Seven foot one, absolute massive humanity, great rim protector, right? Opening night last year, do you guys remember how bad Scoot looked? How horrendous he looked? He's Zubac struggling. just ate him up. Yeah. And he did the same thing again in preseason when I was up in Seattle. I was like, oh, man, that guy has got his, he's got his number. So I was really interested to see if, if how he looked tonight. And he had what, what I would call a development moment. He turned the corner, a left to right drive from the top of the key, and he kind of geared down right around the free throw line and changed speeds, which is something he doesn't do. He typically stays at one speed, which mm. you can't do unless you're up, you know. You're that much faster than everyone. You're John Wall. Derek Rose, Prime. Yeah, Darren Fox. Like, you're just so fast. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. You Otherwise, bigs can just time you and send your stuff into another dimension. Well, he got Zubach to kind of do the, uh, and, and kind of rock on his heels to his toes where he just wasn't quite, mm. the timing was there. And then he just dipped to the side and went under his arm, scoop layup. And I was like, that's it. That's the growth right there. Mm-hmm. Now, he had a couple possessions where things kind of fell apart, and I think he, the trust that he had bur- er- earned in that moment burned a little bit of equity. Uh, but I, I think it's kind of what you're getting from him. You're getting more bursts of good, but you also have like – and the thing is, the, the burst of good in that first half, mm-hmm. it's not always enough to offset the burst of bad, even if the, even if the good is significantly more. If you get like two turnovers and like a bad shot and three out of like five possessions, it kind of snowballs in the right. NBA, and so it's kind of like ah, gotta go, and it gets the quick hook. But you saw it against the uh, the Pelicans where he got the opportunity to close the game because it was you know he was right there and, and, and making well. making good plays that were consistent. And I think that's the big thing you take away from last night. Everybody had moments. Scoot had moments. Murray had moments. Klingon had moments. Roops had moments. Uh, DeAndre Ayton was successful. Tumani Kamara was successful. Anthony Simons was successful. Like, really, the only player last night who had a kind of like a, eh, that's a tough night, was Jeremy Grant. And that's it. And the thing about this, and this is kind of going full circle, this is why you don't have to worry about them losing games. Because it's going to eventually come. I mean, you had everyone on the roster produce, except for Jeremy Grant, and you won by one against a shorthanded Clippers team that's kind of uh, not that great. It's also going to kind of be the Clippers team this whole year. Like, do you really trust that Kawhi is going to come back? No. But I I think for me, and I hope a lot of other Blazer fans are like this, when I look at Scoot Henderson, I almost look at him through like a freshman or rookie quarterback type of look. Like, when you watch the rookie quarterbacks this year in the NFL, they have moments where it looks great. Especially like right now in Denver and Washington, you're starting to see those two quarterbacks really pick it up. But when you look at a guy like Caleb Williams, he has the ceiling that, no offense to Jane Daniels or Bo Nix, I feel like it is higher than what their ceiling is. Mm -hmm. But at times, his floor is lower. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like Scoot Henderson still has that ceiling where he could be one of the better point guards in the league. But his floor is also lower just because he has the ball in his hands so much. And he's got young guy, you know, tendencies, which are not great. It's You can see it coming when he has, like, veteran point guard, you know, let's just use Darius Garland, who, who had a very, 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 very terrible rookie year. One of the worst rookie years we've ever seen. Yeah. He is now at a point where, like, you see him, he's like, he knows how to set guys up. He knows how, how, how to set defenders up. He's a great shooter. He can get to his spots. Like, when he goes through a pick and roll, he's got plan A, plan B, plan C, plan D. Like he has, a, it's a checklist that he goes down to execute. Mm-hmm. Like he knows how he's going to attack. Scoot has plan A, and if plan A doesn't work, he doesn't have plan B. There's no plan B, and it's and you can see him. It goes, you know, screen, rescreen. Ah, I don't like this. Let me pull this back. And has he has he tween tween hang dribble pull up jumper? And it's like, ah, uh, and it's it's. It's not a, I'm trying to get to my spot and get this jump shot off. It's, I'm immediately settling for this shot because, mm. ah, screw it, because I don't know what to do here. Okay. And that, he just needs to get more reps and more opportunities in those moments to where he gets those out. And I think the good moments you're seeing, plan, plan executed. And even if the plan isn't executed, you see, like, the idea of what they're trying, what, are, what he's trying to accomplish. And I think those moments are becoming much more prominent 
than they were last year by by a, a by leaps and bounds. The the finishing, the shooting, like the percentages, I have a reeling suspicion that they're just going to be better because of just general growth. Mm-hmm. How good they are, that's the differentiation. Well, hopefully this continues to build. I'll tell you what, my sports pants got a little tight when Scoot alley oop clinging. That's exactly what you want to see, I feel like, as a fan. I want to see the growth in the young players, but I especially want to see the young players performing well together. And so it felt like finally, and I know Sprague tweeted about it too, but it was like, yes, I want to see more of that. Mm-hmm. And that's the thing. is, like, What you saw last night, I think, is the, the, the general game that you want to see from them. Be, cool. be feisty, be pesky, be aggressive, be fun. Like the, the getting out in the open floor and getting like Tumani gets some dunks, you know, uh, Ant mm-hmm. gets out and gets a dunk. Like Denny gets out and gets a dunk. Like just find a way to be young, long, strong, and athletic, and mm-hmm. impose that will to like whatever extent that you can. Mm-hmm. There's some nights like tomorrow night against Oklahoma City, they are drastically outgunned, and I, uh, I'm I'm struggling to think of a line big enough where I wouldn't be like, eh, Thunder can probably cover that. Yeah, Th- Thunder can probably cover that. Like. We saw them get a 12-and-a-half-point line against the, the Kings on the road. OKC is probably going to come in like 15-point favorites. Not good. Which well, is, you know, look, if, and, 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 if they, and if they hang with them, great. But I fully expect them to stack up a lot of losses here in, mm-hmm. the, in, the, in the coming days.